going on Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams and today uh, is a very momentous day because after a lot of due diligence and uh, some thorough proper quarantining, it is time to distribute some fish. So I think unlike many of you, when I get a fish, it's months and months before it's put out into a tank just because I have the patience and I have the um, resources to properly quarantine fish like really really thoroughly so um, I've been measuring my copper levels for more than two weeks and it started a little bit high 0 0.51 um, a few days ago it was 0.37 so I know it's above that 0.25 threshold um, that is gonna absolutely eliminate ick and uh, you know I was dosing before but I just made sure to like totally follow through at the end so uh, we have a number of various fish that I've had for a while that are gonna go in uh, one of the fish tanks and one of the reef tanks and one of the things that's super important before we started this video is I did a, a visual inspection of the fish just to make sure to verify that they're clean and healthy enough to go out because once they're out in reef systems or the fish system um, it's going to be a, a whole nother deal to actually take care of them so I want to show you a little bit uh, one fish that did not pass inspection is my potter's angelfish um, I think potter's angelfish are one of the most beautiful uh, reef fish arguably one of the most beautiful of all pygmy angelfish fishes and I um, picked up this guy about two months ago um, he brought in a little bit of ick and he's doing well uh, eating really really well uh, but he's got kind of just like a little patch of funk on the other side of him that I'm not uh, confident about and I am not uh, confident putting him out anywhere so he is not gonna pass he's not gonna graduate from the quarantine system today um, but the a lot of the other all the other fish that I had considered are going to so the uh, Swiss Guard and the Candy Basslet um, have really bonded uh, since they were here and they kind of chased out the Cave Basslets. So those two are going to go in the 40 gallon uh, LPS tank. And then here's a couple used fish. You guys know how I like my used fish. We have the Allardyce Clownfish. Um, I picked him up at uh, Aqua Imports in Boulder. He was labeled as a Clark Eye Clownfish for like $30. And it's a really showy uh, Indian Ocean species that, ha that really does have those bluish, bluish stripes that you can see here. And um, I think he's gonna pop a lot more once he is in the fish display. And the other fish that's a little bit harder to catch is a nice large male Timor wrasse. Now Timor wrasses, they've always been one of my favorites. They're kind of like a pseudo feminist in their color uh, appearance, but that was a grown out fish uh, from uh, Vance over at uh, Aquatic Art. He brought it in because he's like super focused on the epaulette shark and he didn't want anything to uh, mess with it. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and catch some of these fish and put them out. No real uh, uh, acclimation needed because they're going into systems here at the studio. And to do that, as you know, go ahead and use a specimen cup. So whenever possible, man, I really, really avoid fish nets uh, at all costs. Always try to, instead of chasing the fish with the net, I chase them into a specimen cup and that you know reduces any kind of abrasion to the fish. And um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get both of these fish at the same time, but we'll give it a try. If you've never caught fish with a specimen cup before, um, I don't know how many of you do this regularly, but uh, it can be quite effective. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and get the rasp to start. And uh, rasps like to jump, so we're gonna give them a minimum amount of water. There we go. And take him over to the fish tank. This is gonna be the first and probably the only rasp for this fish system, although I am kind of interested in getting a harlequin tusk for this tank. So don't really wanna put the water in here very carefully. Bloop, there's your new home, buddy. Go find a place to hide and get yourself settled in. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab this Allardyce clownfish here. Should be, you see how easy that was without a fish net? No rubbing, no scuffing, no abrasions. And uh, all right, buddy. So that you used fish, uh, they are way more acclimated to aquarium life. Come on, buddy. There we go, there we go. Oh, it's a good thing we're here. All right, come on. There we go, there we go. Make sure he gets to the bottom. All fish can jump, we're gonna give him just a little bit of water. 
and here we go. Man, I am excited about having one nice kind of showy clownfish in the fish tank. I think that's gonna be super fun. These fish haven't had any new tank mates in, man, probably since like early summer when we were doing a lot of work on this tank. And there you go. Nice big female African Allardyce clownfish. So of all the groups of marine fish, the ones that I hold dearest in my heart are actually angelfish. And it was about several months ago, I realized I only had one or two kicking around the studio. So I'm really excited to add the conspic, the tiger angel, and the two African flamebacks to the fish system. Um, this is a replacement tiger angel fish because I made a boo-boo, but I'm gonna talk about that on a whole nother video about some of the mistakes that uh, um, some experts make and uh, some of you know, the lessons that we've learned here at the studio. So without further ado, let's go ahead and and grab uh, whichever angelfish we can get first. I think I'll just take this whole lid off right now. So it's gonna be a lot easier. Let's see what we can do here. I'd like to catch these pygmy angels before they go into that structure. Come on, buddies. Come on, buddies. All right, we got two. Two and a molly. I guess this molly was destined to, oh, nope. <laughs> All right, so now let's go take these guys over to the fish system. This conspic has been here for like almost two years and it came in real small and he's grown really well. So let's go ahead and plop these guys in here. There you go. <laughs> distract that trigger fish until he realizes those are tank mates, not food. Hey, hey, you better not, boy. You relax. Oh, this is a feisty tiger. I had uh, had Evan sitting over here watching the fish tank, making sure there was no uh, serious aggression. And there we go. I wonder if I can get away with uh, putting the <laughs> I think I'm gonna try the spot synctus in here. Try the spot synctus clownfish and see if it'll kind of pair up with the Allardyce because they're, they're very similar. So this is a really exciting addition because this tank is really dark and some of the colors and pattern of the Swiss Guard and the Canny Basslet um, have become a little bit muted. As you may remember, these are two of the fancier basslets available from the Caribbean Ocean um, that are really pretty, very personable, but in this tank, they've kind of become a little bit muted. Um, these t uh, fish were provided by Among the Reef. Um, so I wanna thank them for offering these fish to us to put in our display. And I'm really excited to get them in some reef lighting because we're not going to see them for a while but once they get established in that tank and all those caves and overhangs uh, those are gonna be some awesome really fun pet fish so um, let's go ahead and see which one we can catch first yeah I know you like to hide up in there come on buddy there we go there we go slowly slowly just work your weight towards the box oh he was riding the bottom and his snout bounced off okay all right come on was a little bit too gentle there. Come on. Can we get them both at once? Both at once, both at once, both at once. There we go, look at that. Made it look easy. No editing either. All right, make sure they go to the bottom of the container before I flip it over. Come on, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Once again, pour out most of the water so they can't jump out. Let's get a good look at these while we can because they are definitely gonna be a lot harder to see once they are in the reef system. Yeah, these guys look beautiful, colorful, impeccable. And uh, so since these are in coppered water, I'm just gonna grab them gently by the hand and put them in the reef water just like that, and there we go. Now with this container, we're gonna walk them over to the LPS tank. It has lots of caves and overhangs, and is uh, 
mostly low light, except for all the diffuse light that comes in from this window, which I'm gonna have to do something about here. So uh, I'm super important when you're pouring fish into a tank, that's a good time for them to jump. So we're just gonna still keep it covered. Just gently let them go find some new homes. So yeah, those guys are gonna find a hole and pretty much uh, disappear <laughs> for a while. So we're gonna let the fish settle down um, in this tank and then that tank. We're gonna keep an eye on everybody, make sure there's no undue aggression. We're gonna work on a different video, but um, just check back in here a little bit and we'll see how the fish are doing. You know, when you introduce new fish into an established community, there's always that moment of tension, especially if you add one fish at a time. In some ways, like I said, mentioned earlier, a lot of the aggression and the territoriality can be focused on one fish. And it's so much better to add more than one fish at a time. This is how you get away with adding more than one tang or several tangs to a tank at a time. And, but there's also that stressful moment where I added, five, six fish to the tank all at once. And uh, you know, the trigger just kind of was triggered a little bit and uh, everybody kind of had to reestablish the pecking order. But it's been several hours and now that everybody's inside, oh my goodness, it just, it just looks like a beautiful, nice community saltwater fish tank. And since this is only 120 gallons, I'm gonna have to think long and hard about the last few fish that I want to add to this aquarium. I don't think there's gonna be anything crazy. I'm kind of interested in a true Australian harlequin tusk. Um, maybe a red lip cleaner wrasse would be really nice. I'll, I would do with a regular cleaner wrasse. And I'm kind of interested in replacing the Madagascar damselfish with a pair of nice, Southern Pacific uh, Starkai damselfish. So um, in the meantime, I'm very much just gonna keep an eye on all these fish. Look, everybody knows the dinner bell. Everybody knows where to go to feed. Um, these are all very well-trained fish, but I'm gonna enjoy having uh, a mostly saltwater fish tank now. You know, for a while, uh, you guys were justified in chiding me a little bit for having so many mollies when it was only a pair of butterfly fish and a trigger fish in there. It just kind of, you know, it definitely looked a little bit empty. But now, you know, we have some good diversity of colors, diversity of patterns, and uh, it looks like a fun, unique saltwater aquarium fish display. So uh, I know most of you guys, and myself included, are primarily focused on that that reef aquarium uh, game, but there's still a really fun things you can do with a saltwater fish tank that you can't do with a saltwater reef tank. So um, I hope some of you enjoyed this video and uh, also the dynamics of mixing fish and all the quarantining process. This has been a really fun display. Um, thank you for joining me on this video. If you have any questions about general fish care, uh, always down to talk about quarantine, go ahead and put those down in the comments below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, make sure to subscribe so that you never miss any more videos like this because we're coming at you with the content uh, harder and faster than we ever have before. So thank you very much for joining me on this video and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye guys.